Welcome back to Muscle Tree Psychiatry with Dr. Mellon. This is our schizophrenia tour. We're still working on the diagnoses of schizophrenia with the symptom criteria. We did negative symptoms last time. Um, this time we're going to be going over one of the positive symptoms, delusions. So again, a delusion is a firmly held belief that cannot be changed despite evidence to the contrary, and it's not with their cultural background. Okay, so general information on delusions. It's not a misunderstanding of the evidence, like can happen with dementia, using drugs, that kind of stuff. Um, they understand and reject the evidence. There's no official or correct categories of delusions. They're just conventions. It doesn't really matter. Um, the DSM does have its own special little system. Um, you don't ever have to reference it or use it in psychiatry if you don't want to, it's fine. So they use a two by two system. So they'll say bizarre versus non-bizarre um, delusions and then mood neutral versus mood congruent delusions. Um, the big categories being bizarre versus non-bizarre. Um, so first, just to kind of force for the tree setup, um, delusions can occur for different reasons, right? It doesn't have to be schizophrenia. It could be due to an organic cause. So these, this is, I'll give you some examples from real things, and it's just abnormal beliefs, right? So um, these are some examples. So if we said, um, this is a carcinoma. All the excrement in the building is mine. The hospital is floating in water. Or let's see, the doctor's taking blood out of me and putting it back in my neck. They are drunk. My relatives and I are dead. Mixedema, adenoma probably. Um, let's see what else we got. Something bad's about to happen to me, and my mother is dying. Lupus, right? So, I mean, there, uh, delusion can happen for any reason, right? It's an abnormal setup or thought. So make sure it's actually occurring in schizophrenia, and this is a long-term thing. Um, pro um, the diff differential diagnosis to really consider is a cognitive deficit. Make sure the person doesn't have a general problem with just their thinking, all right? That would lead them to attend to and interpret um, irrelevant stimuli as meaningful, right? Low IQ, could be just magical thinking, person just kind of strange, right? Um, abnormal theory of mind, like autism, they just maybe have low cognitive empathy and they're just, they're reading things wrong, the stimuli. Um, malingering, um, I'm gonna leave this for another, another setup, another day. Um, so, Let's go into the DSM version. Um, we'll use theirs. So if we say bizarre delusions, right? So these are strange delusions. I'm gonna say again right now, none of this matters. None. And I, I really mean that. So you get tested on this stuff, but just because people in the 1600s thought everything was witches and demons, and everybody in 1970 with, thought everything was about satellites, you know, watch them from outer space and everything after 2000s about microchips and the internet, right? Like, it, it doesn't matter. It's just their weird beliefs that they have that obviously have no basis, but it's cultural and time sensitive. So, um, you know, is there really a big, should we have a category of delusions involving the internet? Did, that ex did anybody before, you know, 1950 ever once mention that? No because it doesn't matter. It's a made up category. It's just, just a way to describe what people currently have. Um, ones, I'll just kind of go over some of the maybe high yield things you get talked to about, that kind of stuff. Um, there's some fancy words you'll never remember. Um, it doesn't matter. So you say capgrass delusion, belief that another has been replaced with an identical imposter. So, um, there's a cotard or coded, um, I think it's cotard, delusion. Um, it's basically the same idea sometimes of what um, the nihilism is, um, delusion, but it's a belief that one does not exist or you're already dead. Um, half of them think they're immortal in that situation. Um, you can have, um, let's see, delusions of, of control are, are a big deal. Um, it's a belief that outside forces can control your thoughts emotions or actions. Um, so this is gonna be one of the most prevalent kind. It's it's common with persecutory kind of delusions. Um, so here's like a one I had from a patient I saw once. He said, all people are the same. They all take my body. I asked the same question for six years. Where is my body? 
My body is not my own. I do not move my body. It was a schizophrenic patient with a, um, a, who had an abdominal scar that they were fixated on from getting stabbed. Um, so, you know, right? We always say that uh, you're more likely to be, if you have schizophrenia, you're more likely to be the one who gets harmed than the other way around. This was one of those patients. So that became his part of his delusion. Um, there's delusions of reference, so um, many or nearly all things in the environment have a special meaning to them. They're specifically put there for them, or they, they can recognize the special meaning to it that other people don't see, it's that kind of thing. Um, mind reading, right, it's like literally what it says. You can read minds, or others can read your mind. Like you can have a diffusion of thought, and that's another, they, they give it a term, but it's diffusion of thought is, that was one of the ideas with that. Um, it doesn't have to be bizarre though, so, right? They can be non-bizarre. So we say, we say that just it's a firmly held false belief that are not obviously false without fact checking. If they tell you, you know, everybody's the same person and they stole my body and the internet controls you, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just a delusion. It's pretty bizarre. It doesn't fit anybody's culture. But you know, if they're saying their person's cheating on all, all the time, their, their, their spouse, significant other, then, um, it's not obvious that that's false until you look for it. Um, so you, or you could have um, devo um, delusions of guilt or sin or self-accusation, like you've done something wrong. Um, persecutions, persecutory. So this is very common, but you have, you know, sometimes it's obvious. You know, it's the CIA, FBI, and the the Russian Mexican mafia are looking after me. Like, okay, that's probably made up. That doesn't make any sense. But it could be that you know they're spouse or somebody's sounds like they're stalking them and you got to make sure that they're not being stalked um you know so grandiose delusions kind of fall in this because it's not always you don't always know so it can be an abil a grandiose ability identity or um a religious so um this you just have to make sure you know when you're paying attention looking this make sure that the person's not manic in this kind of situation and they're saying all these things and you're getting confused and have a hard time telling schizophrenia from a manic patient which can be hard depending on the situation to be honest because psychosis all looks the same at some point um so grandiose ability would um for a um non-bizarre delusion like um, unusual talents or great invention groundbreaking ideas they solve some mad math problem or major concept difficulty that others have um, identity so they, they think there's somebody who's like a famous musician or athlete royalty that kind of thing um, or grandiose delusions like an angel prophet saint or they're actually just straight up incarnated of God right um, sometimes you have to check that stuff because you know sometimes it's actually true I mean we've had patients that they said they were at some major movement or at Hurricane Katrina and doing stuff and you look them up and they really were um, so um, I don't think there's too much more to say about delusions I think that's that's pretty much it so when they when they use this terminology for the DSM so you could say it's bizarre versus non-bizarre and then list the, the actual delusion and then you know if it's mood neutral like the content is just people are leaving messages for me and they're special for me um, versus mood congruent. So that's more of like you're looking at schizoaffective disorder or something and they're having certain things like they're when they're depressed, they're really having negative delusions. And then if they're really manic, they're having, you know, they're they're a prophet at that point or doing great things as a superstar. Um, it's kind of all you need to know. So it's just it's just a lot of descriptors and, and, and ink spilled on describing the thoughts that the patient's having. It's it's um, other than saying there's delusions, it's kind of that fallout problem where um, you know Kraplin and some of them they, they did a good job trying to just hammer down. There's basic three or four categories and leave it at that. And then different psychiatrists and the psychoanalytics and stuff they just went crazy you know crappy all over the place just writing down things and papers that they really don't mean anything and and it's time dependent like i said nobody cared about the internet till the internet was there nobody cared about witches except for everybody's talking about witches at some point in time um so the actual content doesn't matter but um yeah so there's the delusions it's one of the positive symptoms for schizophrenia all right that's been another episode of mostly true psychiatry with dr mellon and We'll keep cranking these out. Take care, everybody.